<laughs> so Andrew. No, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Uh, let's I'm just not ready. do it. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Coming to you from Charlottesville, Virginia, Willow Talk. With your hosts, Andrew Carter and Ben Fry. So, Andrew. Hey, Ben. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Um, I hear WWDC just happened this week. It's, yeah, it did. It's kind of still going on at the moment, but by the time that you see this, it will be done. It's over. So, what are we doing here? Well, um, because it's a lot of different content to watch and we're lazy, we've enlisted the help of all of our coworkers to go figure out what's the coolest new stuff and come uh, and talk to us about it. Tell us. Yeah. So, we're doing that. So, what we're going to do is um, over the next week or two, we're going to have uh, our buddies come up to us and talk about some cool new APIs. We'll put together a, a little series of different videos and show off one or two or three different things per video. Yeah, we were going to try and do one big one, but there's just a lot of cool content to talk about. So, it's probably going to be a series of a few small videos yeah. uh, released pretty quickly back to back. It'll be nice. In the next couple weeks. All it's right. pretty cool. So, um, we'll get right into it. Here we go. All right, so we got Matt Jones here. Matt Jones, Hello. what did you check into, man? I checked out those nifty old new UI kit animation stuff. Well, show us what you got. <laughs> All right. So here I have this uh, pretty <laughs> pretty plain app. You see the uh, Ben and Andrew in the sky because they are my sky. Now, did you did you design this yourself? I did. I designed it myself. Because it's looking pretty dank. I know. I, I, I like to think I'm good at that. <laughs> but right now, it's it's pretty plain, right? Very vanilla. Nothing special mm -hmm. happening. Sure. So, uh, how about we dig in here, and we have this animator, this UI property animator. Ooh. It doesn't really matter what the duration or curve is, um, because I attach it to the... Um, Content offset of the scroll view. No and way. The scroll view does So how does scroll. that work? And so, like, all you really have to do... Oh, I see. Fraction complete. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So... And you don't have to wrap that up in a, an animation block or anything. Nope. You just do it? Yeah, you, you just register these animation blocks. So here... So these are all different. So, the, so each one of those, um, like, title view animation, Android animation, those are all tied to those specific UI views and their properties? Yes. So down here, we have the title view animation, which is just... Um, animating the alpha in. Mm -hmm. uh, the the Andrew and Ben animation one, you'll see what they do in, in just a sec. So let's rerun this guy. Get ready for it. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, looks like I got a little problem there. Let me fix that. Is that the right syntax? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that, that, that new Swift 3 stuff. <laughs> Andrew Image View. It's trying to help you out there. It's trying. I, I like the new, the, the new syntax and takes some yeah. getting used to, but I do like it. Well, it feels more Swift like mm -hmm. than. How it used to be. All right, let's try it again now with the proper view ordering. <laughs> Aha! Nice. Woo! That's pretty sweet. <laughs> and always cats, always cats. Every example I do. So it's calling that animation, that animator, on every time scroll view did scroll. Yeah. View. So it 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 um it does all the interpolation for you. Right. Builds out the curve. Except I think. It makes the curve linear no matter what mm -hmm. when you set the fraction complete okay. on the animations. So, uh, but yeah, the new syntax with the transforms, look at that. You make the transform right. like without the C style function sure. and then just chain these. Uh, oh, nice. You, you can chain, chain it like that. Oh, okay. That's really cool. Wow. Yeah. Just like that. And then these, um, one thing that I was like, excited about was you could. Like these different, you, you, you just, you've got a property for that animator. So if you wanted to have like, um, you know, a few different like core animations throughout your application, you can kind of like, it makes it more reusable, yeah, easier yeah. to contain, and, you know, its own little objects. That's super cool, man. Yeah. 
But uh, so I decided to go one step further. All right. To show off uh, As one of the cool does. things that I'm not sure existed before iOS 10, if there was any way to do it. And uh, I'll show you the animation first. Get ready for it. Whoa! Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sweet. I want to try. Dude, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what does it take to make that happen? So are you chaining multiple ones together there? Is that what's happening? No, actually, check this out. So apparently, if you add an animation block to the animator, and it contains keyframe animations, oh, it will interpolate all, okay. yeah, all those steps. Wow. Huh. So yeah. That is super cool. Let's, yeah. let's just see that one more time. That is just like a small amount of code to right. do some like really cool animation. So yeah, all that, all that hard work you were doing. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, and this, this adds so much to, to you know, this, this takes a boring interaction that makes it super fun and cool, you know? Yeah, you just keep adding blocks to the animator and it just, you do whatever you want. That's great, man. Yeah, that's super finish cool. up the Willow Talk app now. It looks like <laughs> that's right. you're on the hook uh, now. Oh god, no! <laughs> no, you started it. <laughs> this is what you signed up for. How did you um? How do, how do you like the Xcode beta? Is it feeling pretty good too? Well, as you see, I have no syntax highlighting. <laughs> so that hasn't changed. Yeah, that's, that's just that's <laughs> gonna make you a stronger programmer, though. You know. Yeah, that, that'll be the number one feature of the. Uh, Xcode nine. It's like using yeah, those keyboards that don't have the um, lettering on them. You know, yeah. makes you a better touch typist. <laughs> that's good. Well, at least, least it's indenting. Yeah, that's way well, yeah, you're getting something there. Um, well, thanks a lot, Matt. Um, that's super, super cool. I'm looking forward to using this in my real apps. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Now, if I could figure out how to do the curves, like actually interpolate the curves, just to make your own, like kind of ease in, ease out, like yeah. those kind of things, but different. Because you can, you can define your own curves now, um, but they have to be animated. I think you can. Like, as soon as you make it an interactive mm -hmm. transition, like I was doing, it, it makes it linear. Huh. That's interesting. Maybe, maybe that'll change the next beta. Maybe. Videos. That'd be amazing. That's super cool. All right, man. Thanks a lot. There we go. All right. We got Halen here. Um, Halen, what are you going to show us, man? I'm going to show you some watchOS stuff. WatchOS. My favorite OS. <laughs> He's lying. The smallest of the OSs, in <laughs> fact. All right. Um, one of the big things with watchOS at this year's WWDC is making watchOS faster. Um, that was one of the big complaints, but they're really putting in a lot of effort to make the software faster. Um, so I have a little example app to show you here. Um, it's a little app for tracking exercises that you might want to do throughout the day, um, just to keep, uh, keep your fitness up. So I have push-ups, crunches, and jumping jacks listed, and we can jump in to see how many I've done uh, today. And if I've done a set, I can just click and add but if I want to go back and see what I've done for each one, I have to go back and then jump into the detail, and it's a lot of clicking and jumping. And if you're holding the watch with your wrist raised, then that even just one second or two can add up. So with watchOS 3, Apple is adding a new option for tables, which makes this a lot nicer. And you can set all this up in Interface Builder. Um, and one key thing to note is the use of segues. The segue is how watchOS 3 knows how to properly transition to each detail um, whenever you're scrolling through. So we have the segue set up. Um, so you're setting up a segue from each row into the view that it's pushing into, right? Yes, so the segue is from the table row onto the detail. And you make sure, of course, uh, you have the identifier so that your code can set things up properly. And then once you have all that working, there's just one property that you can click on the table for item pagination. And once you do that and rebuild, then you'll be able to scroll through your items in a list a lot faster. So the OS knows that that initial table that you click to get into the detail, it can then kind of like, as you scroll up and down, it'll know what you want to get from that previous item in the table to save you the interaction of going back and forward and back and forward. Yep, exactly. And it actually does some prefetching. So when I click on one of these behind the scenes, it will fetch all three of them. So scrolling is really smooth. So we'll click on one, and then it brings it back to the um, scene I was in before. But now, instead of having to go back and forth, I can just scroll right through. That's awesome. That was all done with Interface Builder. Yep, all Interface Builder. Now, can you do that in code? If you want to rewrite the whole thing, sure. 
Um, but Interface Builder is definitely the preferred place to go. Just one checkbox here and everything's done for you. So it's gonna handle all that prefetching for you and performing the segways. Yep, everything's done behind the scenes and it works great. So what if I have, um, what if one of my detailed pages also has a scroll view inside of it? Does that work okay or is it kind of kind of messy? You'll wanna rethink the design. Sure. Um, if you have scrolling within the paginated table, the inner scrolling will actually take precedence. Okay. So the paging will get wonky. That makes um, sense. So you'll want to make sure to have everything on one screen, and it's also good for the user. They don't have to um, spend more time scrolling through to, to pick out what they want. Right. Well, this this is really cool because it seems like a very like almost for free thing you just get in Watch OS three. Just go click a button, and now you've got this you know big speed boost that saves users trying to keep on going back and forth and back and forth in your app. That's Absolutely. Awesome. And in Watch OS three, Apple's already done this on some of their apps like Weather and Stocks. Gotcha. So if you're if you're a developer, you can download the beta, start playing with it, and it's really nice. That's really cool, man. Thanks yeah. for showing us.